Welcome to Betrayal Trauma Recovery. This is Anne. I have Sam Black, the Vice President at Covenant Eyes Internet Accountability, on today's episode. He is the author of The Porn Circuit, Understand Your Brain and Break Porn Habits in 90 Days. He joined the Covenant Eyes team in 2007 after 18 years as a journalist and has edited 16 books on the impact of pornography and how to protect our families. He has been married for 23 years and is a father of two. Welcome, Sam. It's an honor to be here. Thank you, Anne. So Sam and I have talked with each other a few times at different conferences, and I was so impressed with the Covenant Eyes philosophy of how to help families. It's not just about filtering. So we'll start there. As you're listening to Sam talk about Covenant Eyes Internet Accountability, if you're interested in having this type of accountability in your home and available to your family, then you can use the code BTR and you can get 30 days free. They have offered that to us for our BTR listeners. So as you're listening today, kind of think about that. And if you want to take advantage of that special offer for BTR listeners, then you would go to Covenant Eyes and make sure that you enter in that code, BTR. So let's start with Sam talking about the difference between accountability software and filtering. That's a great place to start. Filtering, that's what most people think about. Most families think about. They think about how do we just block the bad stuff and then we don't have anything to worry about. The problem is in our culture today, that doesn't work very well. In fact, children, teens, tweens, adults treat filters a lot like a fence. They walk around the fence and they beat on the boards of that fence so they find a loose board or an open gate. And then that becomes their secret way to get through. In 2016, Barna Research did a study on the impact of pornography on our culture today, and they found that every single home they interviewed, if filtering only was being used, that home was accessing pornography. Every single home they interviewed, 100%. That's crazy, isn't it? So that's with filtering. With filtering. Isn't that crazy? Someone who just uses the filtering setup on, say, OpenDNS or something like that. That's what you're talking about, right? Whether it's OpenDNS or another filter that they've actually installed on their devices. Wow. So does it create this atmosphere where the grass always looks greener on the other side of the fence? Our kids don't learn anything from being blocked. And adults definitely don't learn anything from being blocked. And if it does teach them anything, it's how to find a way around it because that's all done in secrecy. And so at Covenant Eyes, we never provide filtering without also accountability. Filtering is there to block accidents and mistakes. Accountability shows intent and curiosity and interests so that we can have an ongoing conversation about what we see and do online and no longer is it private. And even the things that you've done before to maybe beat a filter or test the limits, those things get put on your report, even circumvention methods. Really? So you can see how people are getting around the filter, for example. Very specific things that are done that can end up on your report if you do them to try to circumvent the software, yes. Does the software also work on phones? Because the women who follow this podcast, most of us are dealing with someone who is accessing it on their phone outside of the home or maybe inside the home. Yes, of course, we not only monitor and filter on computers, but also on iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch. But there's some additional exciting news that comes with how we're going to be monitoring on Android devices and computers and iOS devices, iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch as well. And that is screen monitoring. So it doesn't matter where pornography comes from on your computer or Android device. If it appears on the screen, it will go to the report. Again, this is monitoring. So even if you put a DVD into the side of your computer, someone sends you an email with pornography inside that opens and appears on your screen, it will go to your report. Okay. So you've talked a lot about a report so far. So (laughs) Covenant Eyes is a lot different than any other service out there. And this report is one of those things. Can you provide an overview of how Covenant Eyes works and What is this report you're talking about? With Covenant Eyes, you install the software on each device, and we're monitoring how the internet is used on your phones, tablets, computers, and we rate the pages on the internet like you would see for video games and television shows. Everyone, youth, teen, mature teen, mature, highly mature, 
And then that makes it easy to understand what ratings you would see on a Covenant Eyes report. As well, you get to set as the accountability partner what you would like to see on the report. So for instance, if you set it to the teen level, anything rated teen or above would appear on the report. If you set it to the mature level, any websites accessed that were rated mature or highly mature would appear on the report. We'll show you the words that were typed into search engines like Google and Yahoo and Bing, the time and date of that search and a rating for it. We will show you the individual pages that were allowed or blocked based on what you said you wanted to see on the report as well and what the filter settings are set at. We'll show you the times of day the internet's being used by each family member as well. And so that's just a, a quick overview of several of the things we do on those devices. Uh, I think one a common question I hear is, what about incognito mode or private browsing? Yeah. Well, Covenant Ice monitors that as well. Uh, we can monitor and filter within that. Awesome. I not only use Covenant Eyes for myself, I'm only held accountable. I can go anywhere I want to on the internet, on my phones, tablets, computers. But my report goes to three guys at my church, and I send it to my wife. My son comes right behind me on the same devices, and he's filtered at his age level, and he's held accountable, and his reports come to me and my wife. And my son and daughter, you know, were raised with with Covenant Eyes on their devices. And that really created opportunities for me to have conversations I, I never would have even thought to have. Talk about that a little bit. Based on the report that you get, for example, from like your son's report, you're able to then have a conversation with him that you wouldn't have known that you needed to have, perhaps? Let's back up to when he was nine and I get his report and there is a site that's been blocked. And I look at it and it looks like a superheroes kind of site, right? Sure enough, I click on the link that's been blocked and it's rated as though it would be pornography. And it was, it was animated hardcore pornography of superhero characters. Wow. So I thought, well, how can I turn this into a conversation? So I get home that night and I said, Hey son, show me all the pictures that you've been printing out today for your superhero characters. Cause as soon as I saw that there was a bad site. It also allowed me to click on a detailed browsing log on our website. And that allowed me to see the 15 to 20 minutes prior. And I could see exactly what he's trying to do. I can even see the print codes that he's doing to print out pictures of superhero characters. So he brings out his Spider-Man and Thor and stuff like that. And we look at the pictures on his wall and said, Oh, that's just really cool. I said, you know, one of the pages that you visited was blocked. And he goes, yeah, I, I think I remember that. And I says, well, someone was trying to trick you into viewing pornography. And that wasn't even what you were trying to get to. He goes, yeah, the whole idea behind that is now he's thinking for himself. People try to trick me online to view things that I don't even want to look at. And I have to be extra careful. Not everyone online has my best interest in mind. I'm so excited to get Covenant Eyes on our devices, which I have not yet had because we haven't had devices and my children are very young. One of the reasons why I wanted to invite you on today to give me an overview of how I'm going to do that. I recently purchased iPads for my kids to do their homework on and other things that the school has requested that they have access to. For someone who is just starting out like me, what tips would you have well, the first thing you've done right is buy an, an iPad. iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch are probably the most secure place where you can allow your, your children internet access to be able to monitor their apps. So congratulations, you made the right choice. Woohoo! If only <laughs> I had done that with my ex. <laughs> I made one good decision. Yay! <laughs> oh my. The reason why our listeners are so interested in this is because all of us have been affected by our husband's porn use. We understand how damaging it can be. We understand how harmful it can be to not just our children, but also our family dynamic and also the tone that our home has. I really like where you're going there. The understanding that your listeners have had to deal with this in their marriage. 
and their spouses were exposed to pornography. It's had a horrible impact. One of the things I appreciate about our Covenant Eyes and our mission is that we want to help families create a culture of accountability in their home. It's not just for kids to be safe online. We want to create a culture of accountability where we are not only finding healing in marriage, but we're also leading by example that we shouldn't be asking our kids to do something we're not willing to do ourselves. Typically, when a spouse has had such deep struggles with pornography, they were often exposed very early. I'm sure that you see that often. I speak at homeschool conferences across the United States. This is the demographic that is supposed to have everything in line and they've protected their kids. And on a regular basis, I'm hearing about six, seven, eight, nine-year-olds being exposed to pornography and it's heartbreaking. We need to, as parents, step up to the plate and use tools like Covenant Eyes that remind us to have conversations with our kids, but use tools that are available like Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, and Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior. I'm sure that you promote that as well. These are read-along books that help train and teach your kids to know what pornography is, and then you're able to Lead by example. Let your kids know who your accountability partners are. My kids always knew that I was handing my phone over to another man who my wife agreed to and trusted to receive my reports. Because we exercised and led by example in our home, we didn't have to have this fight about, well, when I get 18, I don't have to do this anymore. I think that's very important that we choose devices that we know we can protect. Sometimes we choose devices simply because they're inexpensive or something of that nature. But before we buy a device, I encourage parents to know what they're bringing in their home and they're going to define how they're going to protect it before they buy it. Now, we don't always have that luxury and sometimes we might have to sell a device or just toss it in the garbage to get it out of our home because we don't want devices in our home that we can't protect. And we're going to walk you through several things that you can do to protect not only your iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, but other devices as well. The great thing about iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch is that Apple's done pretty good on providing parental controls anyway, and they work hand in glove with Covenant Eyes. Now, recently, they upgraded what is now called Screen Time. You may have been familiar with restrictions before. Yeah. In fact, just this morning, I had restrictions on mm -hmm. and I was trying to take an app off my daughter's iPad that I am addicted to, not her. And I thought, <laughs> I got to get rid of this thing, right? And so I was trying to find the restrictions to remove it because I changed it so that she couldn't put any apps on or take any off. And you couldn't find restrictions. Yeah, I couldn't find it because of the update. So I'm really excited for you to tell me about this. Yeah, so this is the iOS 12 update, and now you're using what's called screen time. And what we'll do, rather than trying to walk you through the details of how to do that here, you'll have a link there on your site where people can click on it, watch a video with step-by-step -step instructions about how to set up screen time. So if you go to our website and look up Covenant Eyes, you can find this episode, and we'll include all of the links that Sam is talking about right now on that article. Thank you. That's a great place to start. Now, if you have an Android device, recently they've added Family Link. You can set up Family Link, and we'll provide, uh, again, another link that will show you how to do that as well. With Family Link, you can review apps, movies, music, books, and allows you to prove all the content. It will block mature sites in Chrome. When you install Covenant Eyes on a device, it locks Safe Search on as well. For iPhone, iPad, iPod Touch, and Android devices, you can also install Covenant Eyes. I often call this layers of Swiss cheese. Swiss cheese has holes in it, but if you use the parental controls on the devices themselves, that covers one layer, it has some holes in it, and then you put Covenant Eyes on the device, that covers additional holes. And let me give you another layer of protection, and that is protecting your router. You might be most familiar with OpenDNS, mm -hmm. but I'd like to introduce you to something called cleanbrowsing.org. And this was started by a tech genius kind of dad who saw some weaknesses in OpenDNS. Through cleanbrowsing.org, 
it gives you more power over searches. It gives you more power over mixed media content sites like Reddit. And you layer the Swiss cheese. It just takes time. And we provide you some videos and shows you how to do that well. All of the things that Sam just talked about will be on this podcast episode on our website. So you can go and get all the links. I would like to say it sounds extremely hard and overwhelming, but you can do it. You can take one step at a time. And just like anything else that seems hard and overwhelming, if you just take one step at a time, you can work toward protecting your family. We've already talked on the podcast about Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, and other books and resources available to parents to help with their kids. And this is just another layer of, I love that analogy, another layer of Swiss cheese to protect your family. All of these are really important. A little drum roll here. The moment we've all been waiting for in terms of what our listeners are really interested in, and that is how do I stop my husband from viewing porn, whether he wants to stop or not? Um, Some husbands are very interested in recovery and some aren't. And let's talk about what a wife can do to protect her home and protect her marriage in terms of using an accountability software. So one thing women want to know is, is my husband using porn? Many women see the behaviors like the irritability or the anger or just strange, you know, gaslighting episodes or other emotional abuse episodes. And they wonder, is porn an issue here? Would you recommend... And I think I know the answer to this before I ask it, but would you recommend installing Covenant Eyes without a husband's knowledge as sort of a private investigator? We would always say no. Always, always. In fact, when you install Covenant Eyes, we pop up on your screen. The whole idea behind Covenant Eyes is to have an open and honest relationship with someone who wants to help you in your recovery and maintenance to stay away from pornography. We're not spyware. We're accountability software that is all about engaging someone else in your story so that you can find redemption and escape from pornography. That's what I thought you were going to say. And I think that is the right answer. So for women who are wondering, is my husband using pornography? We encourage them here to focus on the behavior rather than trying to find the pornography because they can hide it anywhere, right? An adult can do any number of things so that you would never be able to find it. And then you're just stuck in this loop of, am I crazy? Am I not crazy? What's happening here? To save yourself from that pain. Now, if your husband is interested in having accountability software on his phone and on his devices, should a wife be his accountability partner? What is Kevin and I's feeling about that? I think that is a very individual question to the individual relationship. I highly recommend that every man have another man to be his accountability partner. And I will always say that a wife should always know who the accountability partner is, have access to him, and foremost, that she agree that that is a good accountability partner for her husband. If she wants to receive his report as well, then that might be something that she really needs to think more seriously about. I don't know the answer to that on an individual basis. A betrayal trauma recovery, we do not call them what typical therapists might call them, which might be controlling behaviors or codependent behaviors, but we view them through the lens of safety-seeking and truth-seeking behaviors. Mm -hmm. It's really important for a wife to be safe and for her to know the truth. Absolutely. In this particular case, we have seen that women who are trying to seek safety and truth can't necessarily find it through these methods because if someone wants to hide their pornography use they're going to be able to be successful i think that's really important to put out there that your intention is for safety seeking and for truth seeking but you may not be able to find it in this way or you might be i don't know but it's just to reframe the conversation away from control and codependency toward safety and truth i think helps women a lot realize really what they're looking for. Covenant Eyes is a tool that allows someone to say, I need help, come help me, 
be my accountability partner, be part of my community that is helping my recovery. If I am a person who is addicted to pornography and I don't really want help, I want to use my drug, the truth is I can go down to Walmart and buy a separate smartphone with a separate plan. There's any number of ways that you can seek to hide what you're doing online or in life. And I see Covenant Eyes not as the answer, but as a tool to help someone who truly wants recovery. If a person does not want recovery, we're not going to be of any help. So Sam, you wrote one of the Covenant Eyes eBooks called The Porn Circuit, which examines the neurology of compulsive porn use. How does accountability help the brain heal and leave behind porn use? What we hear from our users a lot is that it has a lot to do with remapping the brain. That prefrontal cortex of the brain often has hyperfrontality. And hyperfrontality and compulsiveness, those are interchangeable kind of words. Think of the prefrontal cortex like a muscle. The more you exercise it, the more you do the right thing, it becomes stronger. So the easier it becomes to say, yes to good behaviors, that people are able to make good choices online because they have this backing. They have a friend who's going to get a report. So when I'm online on my phone or my computer and I see a link or an ad that might lead to something inappropriate, I have time to stop and think, do I really want to visit that site? And I can make the right choice. And I'm exercising that muscle. I'm exercising the prefrontal cortex to make the right decision. And that just makes uh, compulsivity become less. That's very important. That is exactly why I was taking that app off my daughter's iPad, because I was just compulsively playing this stupid game that was wasting my time. And I thought if it wasn't just on her iPad, I would have to think, oh, I have to load it on there. Just giving yourself a couple of seconds to make the right choice gives you a better opportunity to do that. And if you know Someone's going to get this on an accountability report that can help. So now I'm inviting my accountability partner, even when I'm a thousand miles away at a conference, my accountability partners are going to receive a report of what I'm seeing and doing online. Am I skating around the edges? Am I making the right choices? I get to think about all that and make those right choices online. I'm thinking, okay, if I get it on the devices, who would I choose for my accountability partner? And I'm thinking it's going to be a little bit embarrassing. Like when they get my report, they can see like, (laughs) oh no, they saw that I shopped for shoes for two hours and wasted my time. (sighs) But that's all right. Luckily that will be rated E for everyone or youth. So probably wouldn't appear on the report anyway. Oh, woo, phew. They won't be able to see, wow, she really was into shoes that day. Um, that's, that's really good. So let's say that women listening, their husband wants to be in recovery, that he says he's committed to transparency and that he is willing and wants to have Covenant Eyes installed on his devices. What should his accountability relationship look like? Well, it's imperative we have someone that he can trust that he can talk openly with. And that might seem like nearly an impossibility in the first place because he's ashamed, he's fearful. Maybe as a spouse, you feel the same way. I don't want anybody else involved in this. I, I just want to get the report. But we really want someone who can dig deep with us. And that's what we're encouraging community relationships to be like to find someone who is going to ask the tough questions. And so there's some good organizations out there that can maybe help you find a a good accountability partner. Perhaps they might think of something like SA, Sexaholics Anonymous, or SAA, Mm -hmm. or a 12-step group, or perhaps a church group, or some accountability group that they might be a part of in person, perhaps something like that. That's right. So I'd highly recommend a 12-step group. So there are a number of places. If someone is very interested in recovery, he can find an accountability partner and he can find a group. And that's where we get into trouble a little bit. Our listeners is that we try to do this for him, right? Like, oh, (laughs) this would be a good Mm -hmm. accountability partner to have. 
in our community sets us up for more abuse. It sets us up for gaslighting and manipulation and lies. The only way to keep ourselves safe in those situations is to set up boundaries. And setting up boundaries for our children can happen now, right? And making sure that our children understand what boundaries are and how they work and how we can help Mm -hmm. them set boundaries with their devices through using a tool like Covenant Eyes. Absolutely. When it comes to inviting an accountability partner, I, I just so happens that my church, my pastor uses Covenant Eyes and, and all of our staff. On a regular basis, he'll send someone to me and ask me to mentor them. So if you can have a relationship and help educate your pastoral team as well, I think that's highly valuable that they get the Covenant Eyes resources. We have more than 20 separate eBooks. They're all free and you can find them right here next to all the other links that you're providing. And that can help equip a pastor to equip other people in the church to be a true mentor. And so as he is counseling young couples and and singles, he inevitably finds that pornography is often invading their lives. Uh, One of the beautiful things that happened to me this year was a, a young man that I was walking with uh, come up to me one Sunday at church and he hands me a card and uh, I opened it up and he's asked me to be the best man at his wedding. I'm a 50 year old dude. So <laughs> simply because I got to walk with him for at least a year. That's awesome. BTR believes that anyone can change and that there is hope for everyone. And secondly, if they have not yet changed or in the process of their change, they are exhibiting abusive behaviors toward you or any member of your family, it's important to set boundaries around those until the abusive behavior stops. So any lying, gaslighting, manipulation, verbal aggression, any of those types of things need to be stopped before you can engage with them in a healthy way. So as so many women are seeing the abusive behavior surrounding it, they're really wanting their husbands to get into recovery. And there's just no way to do that besides setting boundaries. As you're considering a plan to keep your family safe from pornography, I want to just really quick go over the layers. Number one, boundaries. Two, an accountability software then some things on your router that we talked about, then on the devices themselves, and also education like we talked about with Protect Young Minds or with Educate Empower Kids or other organizations that teach parents how to talk to their children. And then also some recovery resources, um, all of those we give through BTR. It's so important for people to have this well-rounded approach because like we talked about at the very beginning and we'll end with this, Just filtering and hoping that they don't see it and not having the conversation and not having all these other layers in place doesn't do squat. It does nothing to protect you or your family from the harms of pornography. I think filtering alone is a waste of time. (laughs) It can help very young, small children, but as soon as your kids are a little bit older and especially teens and adults, it's just ineffective. We need accountability because accountability involves relationship. That's the real value. So again, if you are interested in having Covenant Eyes installed in the devices in your home for your children and perhaps a spouse who is interested in recovery, the code for that for BTR listeners is BTR. That will give you Covenant Eyes free for 30 days. A lot of people worry about, well, well I don't know how to manage software, or maybe I've got a a firewall on my computer or something else I need to worry about, or I just don't know how to do all this. I saw the video, but maybe I'm not sure how to get all this done. Call us 8 a.m. to midnight, Monday through Friday, 10 to 6 on Saturdays, Eastern time. You get to talk to a real live human being here in the United States at Covenant Eyes, and we will do whatever you need to help you get Covenant Eyes set up on your devices and protect your device as well. And so uh, we're here for you for the long term. uh, Last month, more than 90% of our calls were answered in the first minute. We're the only ones in our industry that do that. It doesn't make a lot of financial sense, but for us, it's our mission and passion to help change culture. And that's why we do it. We take a lot of pride in our customer support and we're here for you for the long run. There is no contract with Covenant Eyes. So if you're not happy with us for any reason, you can quit at any time. So if you sign up for the 30 days free, there's no risk. And that is why I recommend Covenant Eyes. Thank you so much for coming on the podcast today, Sam. And it's an honor to be here. Thank you again. 
So after I finished the official interview with Sam, he actually stayed on the line and helped me put Covenant Eyes on all of my devices, just like their customer service does. And it was actually so much easier than I thought. I was really grateful for the time he took. So I have been using Covenant Eyes on all of our devices since this interview happened. And thus far, it's going really well. I'm really impressed. I'm still learning how to use it. And we will revisit this in a few months and I'll let you know how it's going. Last week, I talked about Giving Tuesday. We are prepping for this annual time of giving so that we can help meet women's needs. Please consider making a monthly recurring donation, perhaps doing a fundraiser on Facebook or talking to a business about matching funds or any way that you could contribute to BTR to help us take this message to all women in the world who need our help. During the holiday season, as you're thinking about gifts, I recommend that you go to our books page. There are many books there that can help you, but specifically from our books page, you can find Good Pictures, Bad Pictures, Good Pictures, Bad Pictures Junior, the books from Educate and Empower Kids. Please visit our books page as you're thinking about this gift giving time. The URL is btr.org backslash books. In addition to the books page, some of these episodes leading up to Christmas will showcase some products that I find useful in this fight to keep our homes safe. I just wanted to bring that up because I know a lot of you are thinking about Christmas or the holidays and thinking about getting devices for your children. And I want you to include as you're considering that how you're going to protect your children and how you're going to protect your home. If this podcast is helpful to you, please rate it on iTunes. Every single rating helps women who are isolated find us. Again, we appreciate your recurring donations. To become a financial supporter of BTR, go to btr.org, scroll down to the bottom, and set your monthly recurring donation. And until next week, stay safe out there.